Okay, sorry for the interruption. I was uh, <clears throat> talking about uh, the first verse of Malashiksha and I was explaining another verse by Raghunath Das Goswami where he pays his obeisances to the Guru and how he follows his own path of spiritual progress. And so at each stage he's saying that the original, right, that, that everything is coming from the Guru. So what is coming from the Guru? Even other Gurus are coming from the Guru. Sachinandan, then Sarup Damodar, then Rupa, along with all his associates, and including Sanatana Goswami. So that's one of the things that you get from the Guru, is Sadhu Sangha. Sometimes it's said that the Guru gives you an entry point into the world of Vaishnavism. People mistake, I think there's a sectarian difference between the different families, the initiated families of Goya Vaishnavism. And there are some differences, there's no doubt about that. But in generally speaking, the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya has become a Rupanuga Sampradaya. And we find this is uh, part of what historically happened at Ketari with Narottam Das and Srinivas and Sashyamananda coming back to the Bengal Vaishnava community, which was disrupted by a lot of infighting and managed to establish an overarching dogma and philosophical and uh, practical form to Gaudiya Vaishnavism that made it possible to standardize in many ways. Of course, there's still sectarian differences there in Gaudiya Vaishnavism, but whatever those sectarian differences are, they all fundamentally accept the Siddhantas of Rupa and Sri Jiva. So, after he's come to say that uh, he's accepting Sanatana Goswami through the grace of the Guru, then the next thing he says is Nama Srashtam Manamapisha Chiputra Matra Surupam Rupam Tasyagraja Murupulim Matarin Goshtavatim Radha Kundam Girivaram, a whole Radhika Madhavasham. He gets Vadakund, gets Govardhan. So, there, this is the stage of internal bhajan, where even Sadhu Sangha has become marginalized as one becomes so deeply engrossed in the internal life that all that's left is. This holy spot of Radha Kund, Giri Govardhan. And Radhika Madhavasham, that's of course the final thing. All coming by the grace of the Guru. The hope for Radha, Radha and Madhava's direct seva, all those things have come from the Guru. Very beautiful verse. So here again he's doing almost the same thing. Guru Goshte Goshtala Yeshu Sujane Bhu Suragane Swamantre Sri Namni Vrajana Vayuva Dvandasmarane Sada Dambhang Hitva Kururatim Mapurva Matitara Hare Swantar Bhatas Chatuvira Vijache Dritta Pada. Oh, my dear brother, my mind, please. I'm begging you, develop love for the following things, for your Guru, for Gosht, for Vrindavan Dham, Goshtali Yeshu, for the people who live in the Dham, Sujani, for pious people, Bhusuragani, for the Brahmanas, Guru Goshte Goshtala Yeshu Sujane Bhusuragane Swamantre Sri Namni Vrajanavayuva Dvandva Smarane Second level. 
the external level, the place, the people, now the internal part. Swamantri, Sri Namni, Raja Nava Yupadvandva Smarani. For the mantra that you got, and for the holy name, and for remembering Radha and Krishna in the Kunj. Guru Goshte Goshta Nayeshu Sujane Bhu Suragane Swamantre Sri Namni Vrajana Bhayuva Dvandva Smarane Sada Dambham Hitva Kuru Ratim Apurva Matitaram Are Swanta Bratas Chatu Viradiyache Dritapada Give up your arrogance, dumbang hitwa. Give up your hypocrisy. Just do it. Give up your doubting, dualistic nature. Invest your mind, invest yourself, mind. Invest yourself in the act of love. In the act of love. And duality is all submerged in communion. So let's read what Bhaktivinoda Thakur says. Guru Debe Braja Bane Braja Bhumi Basi Jane Shuddha Bhakti Aravipragane Ishta Mantre Hari Name Chugalabha Jana Kame Koro Rati Apurva Jatane Dhari Maan Charane Tuma Dhari Maan Charana Tuma Jani Ache Ebesha Krishna Bhakti Bina A Nahi Ghuche Jivera Samsa Karma Gyana Tapa Jog Shakali to karma bhog karma chara ite ke honare. Shakala charia bhai sadha de bir gunagai. Ja kripa bhakti de te pare. Chari dumbo anukhan shara ashta tatamon karotahe nishka potarati. She rati prathanai sridasa go sami pai. E bhakati vi no da kore nati. Guru Deve Braja Bane Braja Bhumi Vasi Jane Shuddha Bhakti Ara Bipragane Ishta Mantre Hari Name Jugala Bhajana Kame Koro Rati Apurva Jatane It tells you, you make an unprecedented effort for these eight Ashta Tattva, he calls it. For these eight things, again, the Guru, right? Guru Dev. Brajavona Vrindavan Dham. This Vrindavan Dham is very important for Gaudiya Vaishnavas. I often hear people say that Vrindavan is everywhere. But to be in that state where you see Vrindavan everywhere. And you should try if you're in New York City, if you're in Calcutta, If you're in Rio de Janeiro, in a favela, wherever you are, you try to see Vrajavana, try to see Vrindavan Dham. I heard recently someone said, I think, quoting an Acharya, a recent Acharya, maybe it was Bhaktivinoda Thakur himself, saying you don't spend a lot of time in Vrindavan. If you come to Vrindavan and your mind is not pure, then you'll be distracted very easily. You'll be distracted by things like pigs, dogs, cows, unscrupulous pandas trying to take your money, cheaters stealing your property, monkeys stealing your glasses and your camera, 
taking your bag of money and throwing it in the air, like happened recently. In the Bhagavatam, there was a nice verse through the Prabhupada, I like that verse very much. Yasyatma buddhi kuna pe tridhatuke sadhi kalatradishu bhoma idhyadhi Yatthirtha buddhi salile na karhichit janeshwa vigyeshu sa eva gokhara If anyone, of course he says many things in that verse, but he's saying if you have if you think that this body, this kunapa, this actually dead body, this lump of flesh, if you think that that's the self, if you think that you have some eternal relationship with wife and children and this world, and you think that those things are yours, and you have some possessive love for them, if you think that the place where you're born, I don't think I don't know if there was nationalism in the time of the Bhagavatam, some kind of nationalism. But even to talk about India, because <clears throat> talking for Indians, but generally speaking, it's a, a tendency of human beings to think that their place of birth, that the world that they know, their country, their jati their race is superior and that that is the worshipable, even worshipable. It is not so stupid. You know, Durkheim, the <clears throat> great sociologist, sociologist of religion, one of the founders of sociology of religion, Emil Durkheim, his uh, contribution was to see religion as being a sociological phenomenon and really what it did was symbolically through the totem first and then gradually through more sophisticated religious forms was uh, had the purpose of creating group solidarity Now, in a modern society, that kind of group solidarity based on religious belief is no longer natural or enforceable because of the multiculturalism and pluralism of most modern societies. And this is, of course, a, a cause of much uh, tension in societies. You just have to think about Islam, and uh, Islamic countries, they established a very strong, and also Christian countries, Europe, prior to the Reformation, had established a very solid kind of religious-based uh, social identity. And now in the modern society, that's being undermined. It creates a great social tension between the people who uh, are conservative and still want to maintain that old system and modern people who are trying to find an overarching secular ideal into which the religious systems can fit as a kind of a sub-sect. Anyway, we've talked about that also on the blog sometimes. But uh, what I was saying here is that the social function of religion and the importance of uh, Rindavan Dham. Rindavan Dham. The importance of Rindavan Dham for So the Vrindavan, people will come to Vrindavan and they see the superficial things. So Bhakti Mahataka was saying, maybe it's better not to stay too long if you don't have that kind of uh, transcendental vision where you can see all the residents of the Dham as being eternally perfected souls, like in Vrindavan Mahimamritam. So the Goshtali issue, Nuru Raghunath Goswami says, have faith in the Dham. 
have love for the dham and have love for the people living in the dham. How can you legislate love by knowing that these people have been born with Radha and Krishna in their blood? That's how. Sujane Bhusuragane. Sujane, Bhakti Thakur calls them Shuddha Bhakta. So Sujane which is normally we just translate as pious person, here is being said by Bhakti Nautaka to be pure devotees. So this is what Rupa Goswami in Upadesha Amrita, he says, Tad nama rupa charita adi sukirtana anusmitya kramena manasa rasana rasane niyoja rasana manasi niyoja Tishtan Rajeta than Uragi Jananugami, Kalam Nayeda Kilamitu to Adesha Saru. This is the Upadesha Sar, the essence of all instruction, according to Rupa Goswami, is that you come to Nama Rupa Charitadi. You come. This is a very beautiful verse also, Rupa Goswami, summarizing the path of Bhajan. Tadnama Rupa Guna, Tadnama Rupa Charita. He mentions those things. Krishna's name first, then his form, then his activities. Kramena. So there's a krama, there's a sequence. You start with the meditation on the name. Now we're talking about smaranam. And we this is what we've been talking about here in this, this verse and, the, and what we also like to talk about throughout Manashiksha because it's instructions to the mind, right? So that's the mind is the field of activities for Raganuga Bhajan. Just like it's the field of activities for yoga. And like it's the field of activities for all the yoga systems. So Jasyate. Sorry, that's a distraction. So, in Dhaban Dham, you have love for the Dham, and you have love for the residents of the Dham, but for your bhajan, Sujane, Bhusuragani, you associate with the pure devotees and the Brahmins. The Brahmins who are also pure devotees, who are leading a holy life, <laughs> excuse me, in the Dham. The Nama Rupa Charitadi Sukirtananu Smrityo. So the Krama is that you start by Sukirtan by purifying your chanting and then through Anu Smriti. Uh, I was talking before about Bhakti Sandarbha and how Jiva Goswami is talking about Smriti, about Smaranam, and how it starts with Yatkinchit Anu Sandhanam. That's the lowest level. And I compared that to Pratyahara. <clears throat> so Anu Smriti is the second last of the five. Samadhi is the fifth one. And very important to notice that, that the word Samadhi which is used frequently through the Bhagavatam, but not so much in the texts of the Goswamis. But here at least, Jiva Goswami says that the goal of, Anus, of Smaranam is to reach Samadhi. So the, just before Samadhi, he has a new category, Anusmriti, which is different from the Yoga Sutra, because the other ones are, you have Smriti, then you have Dharana, Dhyana, Anusmriti, and Samadhi. So that category of Anusmriti fits in. And Anusmriti, well, I don't want to go into too much detail here because Samadhi is a complex subject. 
but generally speaking in in the Vaishnava conception we're not so much interested in asampragyata samadhi at least not in the way that it's described in Advaita and Yoga Shastra. Uh, Anusmriti indicates uh, what probably would be comparable to Sampragyata Samadhi and leaving, anus, uh, leaving Samadhi as Asampragyata Samadhi or equivalent thereof. That will have to be parsed later on. But here at least Anusmriti, the Jiva Goswami gives the example of Taila Dharavhat. And it's like an unbroken stream, like a, when you pour oil out of a bottle or out of a pot, then it doesn't uh, splash or sprinkle. It makes a, a one steady flow. And so when the mind is flowing steadily towards Radha Krishna and to the words, the name, Leela and pastimes, those then that's called Anusmriti. constant remembrance so. and also Anu as we know following that'll be explained to her in this verse as well I'm talking about the Upadeshamrita verse right so Tadnama Rupa Charitadi Sukirtana Anu Smrityoh Kramena Rasana Manasi Niyoja so Kramena you first he says Rasana and then Manasa so here again we're talking about that. First the external senses, and then from the external senses you go to the mind. Just like in yoga, where you start with yama niyama, and then you go through the external process of asana and pranayama and pratyahara in order to bring your awareness to the inner being. To take it from a Bahiranga mentality to an Antaranga mentality. So the body in asana, when you do yoga, asana here doesn't mean all the complex postures of hatha yoga. It means just sitting in one place and being still. But in order to do that, you need to be very aware of the body. You have to have a great deal of bodily consciousness. Now we talk about bodily consciousness, but most people's bodily consciousness is very externally oriented. Paranchikani, Vyatrenat, Swayambhu. And the Upanishad says that the senses are all facing externally because the body has to deal, like we already said previously, with the situation of the body, the protection, reproduction, and so on of the body. So all the senses are connected to those founts, those primordial or primeval founts of animal existence. So you want to retract the senses from those external activities. Now in yoga, the emphasis is given on the quietude, on sitting and on concentrating on the breath. But even the breath is considered to be an external and pratyahara is where you actually start to retract the senses and come inward. Now the bhakti system is a bit different, but there's no reason that you shouldn't think the two can, cannot be combined. As already we're saying, that the process of smaranam is analogous to the process of ashtanga yoga with some differences but not but parallel systems but in vidhi bhakti and in the, in, in the bhakti system you engage the senses rishikena rishikesha sevanam bhakti rutta krishnanu shilanam so krishnanu shilam is very nice because in rupa goswami takes both the external and the internal the anushilanam you engage the senses and the mind here again, he's saying that kramena, that in sequence, you first engage the tongue. So the tongue here is standing in for all the sensual activities, but of all the sensual activities in bhakti, the ears and the tongue are the most important. But the tongue, of course, because when you're engaged in solitary bhajan, 
the chanting and hearing are combined. You chant and you hear. And even if you chant silently, you're still hearing internally. So, Kramena Manas Rasana Manasini Yoja Tishtan Braje. Tadanu Ragi Jananu Gami. You follow, you remain in the association of an Anuragi Bhakta. That's the ideal. Where will you find an Anuragi Bhakta? Go to Vrindavan. Everywhere else you're dependent on small mercies. In Vrindavan you have a Ambara Darishes. There is the richness of devotional association. People come to Vrindavan and unsubjected to the mind they come and what do they do? They find fault with all the Vaishnavas. This is why Bhaktivinoda warns you. You come to Vrindavan and you find fault with the Vrajavasis, you find fault with the Brahmanas, you find fault with the Vaishnavas. What's the point? The way to subdue that is find yourself an Anuragi Bhakta in whose Sangha to stay and where you can engage in the practices of Kirtan and Anusmriti. Raje Radha Krishna Swarati Marudotam Bhajana Guru Goshte Goshtal Yeshu Sujane Bhu Suragane So those are all the externals. Even Vaishnava Sangha is external, but it's a very, very internal external. Look, Bhakti is about love. You don't love, you love things, but love really manifests when you love a person. So Sadhu Sangha in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Rupa Goswami gives three qualifications from Sadhu Sangha. These are very important. That you have Swajati Ashaya, Snigda, and Swatovara. You look for association. What? Swajati Ashaya. Most people they go, oh, this is a Sadhu. But what is the internal life of that Sadhu? What is his mind fixed on? You want your mind to take on the qualities of the mind of the Guru and of the Vaishnavas. And what is the mind of the Gurus and the Vaishnavas? The Guru and the Vaishnavas are imbued with love for the divine couple. You want to be with a Swajati Ashaya, with someone whose heart is the same type as your own, belongs to the same class, the same genre. I'm a Vaishnava, I, I, I want Radha and Krishna Bhajan. What am I doing with other people who have other interests? If you come to Vrindavan, you come to Vrindavan with the intention of finding Sadhu Sangha. If you're lucky, you have developed the desire. And then you come to Vrindavan to fulfill that desire through Vaishnava association. And then what? Swamantre Sinam Nibra Janava Yubadvandva Smarane. So the process of smaran that Raghunath Das Goswami is describing here starts with mantra and has nama and then has Jugala Dvandva Smarana, remembering Radha and Krishna's pastimes or everything. So mantra first and then nama second. So why, why is that sequence there? Well, if you're coming into the process, of, if you're coming into now the internal process of the yogic process of bhakti, let's say, where you're starting to actually become a yogi, how does the sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita end? The last two verses. Tapasvina diko yogi, gani vyascha matodika, karmi vyascha diko yogi, tasmad yogi bhavarjuna. Yogi nam api sarvesham madgate nantaratmana shradhavan bhajate yomam same yukta tamo mata. 
be a yogi. A yogi is better than being a karmi, better than being a tapasvi, better than being a jnani. Be a yogi. But of all yogis, the best yogi is the one who is faithfully worshipping the Lord. Faithfully worshipping the divine couple, Radha and Krishna, whose mind is fixed, who sees Radha and Krishna everywhere in everything, who sees Radha and Krishna as the very self of the self. That's the goal. So when you start the internal process, you start the internal process with mantra. So when you take diksha, what's the difference between diksha and pre-diksha? Hare nam, hare nam, hare nam eva kevalam. So you hear this instruction, hare nam eva kevalam. Then why do you need diksha? What is the necessity? So in the Bhakti Sandarbha you get that explanation. That there is a need for sadhana. And sadhana begins with the pancharatrika processes that make you become more sattvic. So when we, people will chant the holy name, they will dance, they will jump, they will, you know, we see people chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, using the external senses and also moving the body in rhythm in order to be able to some to gain that traction and to bring the mind into focus on the holy name but when you chant the mantra then you sit down you become quiet you still the body how do you still the body so that the mind can actually be fixed on the mantra Krishnaya, Govindaya, Gopi Janavalabhaya This is the first practice of Smarna. And you have Mantra Mayi Upasana and Mantra Mayi Leela. These things are spoken of in the Sandarvas also, in Krishna Sandarva especially, but also in Bhakti Sandarva. The idea that you have Mantra Mayi. Mantra Mayi means what? Mantra Mayi means a still picture. It's like when you have a photograph of the deity on the altar and there is a set scene so that you know exactly where everybody is, what they're wearing, what they have in their hand, everything like this is all told to you before and you concentrate on that. Radharani is wearing what? She's wearing a blue cloth. What is Krishna wearing? A yellow cloth. Does Krishna always wear a yellow cloth? Of course not. But for this meditation, for the Mantra Mayi meditation, Krishna is wearing the yellow cloth. Is Krishna holding his flute? Of course he's holding his flute. What else is he doing? He's looking at Radharani out of the corner of his eye and she's looking out of the corner of her eye. And they're surrounded by the Sakis and the Manjaris. They're in a lotus throne underneath the banyan tree, Bhangshi Bhatt. And that's where you, that's the yoga peat is your entry point into the Leela. And that is the meditation of the mantra. Krishnaya, Govindaya, Gopi Jana Vallabhaya Swaha, Kamadevaya Vidmahe, Pushvalanaya Dini, Tannonam Gapti Chodaya. These are the, these are the mantras. All the other mantras, don't get hung up. These two mantras are the ones that you need. And then the name. What's the name here? Nama Evang Vrata. This is also sometimes considered Vaidhi Bhakti, but the uh, very important verse in the Bhagavatam, beautiful verse. Evang Vrata Swapriya Nama Kirtya Jatan Uraga Druta Chitta Uchai Hasatya Tho Roditi Roti Umadavat Nitya Ti Lokavaya. 
असत्यतो रोदिति रोति उन्मादवा नित्यति लोक माया the dear name chant Hare Krishna or chant some other name so this here is also being talked when he says here Swam Raghunath Das Goswami is talking Japa here he's not talking Kirtan he's talking Japa because the Gaudiya Vaishnava system is to do smaranam in the accompaniment of Japa so you start with the Japa and then gradually Nama Rupa and Guna and Leela, those things fall. Swamantre Sri Namni Vrajanava Yuvatvanda Smarani. So I'll just leave it there because this, uh, I have to keep this short. I didn't finish exactly going through Bhaktivinoda Thakur because Bhaktivinoda Thakur has expanded a little bit on it. What does he say? Let me just finish that. I'll tell you commentary so that I can finish this uh, first verse and then go on to the second verse and my next one. We'll do the whole thing. Why not? You know this. I'm just winging it here, friends. But anyway, so Bhakti Thakur then goes on to say, Dhariman charane tomar, I hold your feet, O mind. Jani achie besa, now I've learned the essence. Yeah, we were just saying Upadesha Saram. Mm -hmm. Rupa Goswami said, Ityupadesha Saram, go to Vrindavan, associate with an Anuragi devotee, control your tongue and your mind by fixing them on the name and the Leela. Watch the progressive development of your bhakti in the association of devotees. So he says, Janiyachi Ebesa, Krishna Bhakti Bina. Ah, nahi guche jivera shamsa. So now I have learned that you can't become free of material life, of repeated birth and death, without Krishna bhakti. Karma jnana tapo jog, shakali to karma bhog, karma charaite keho nare. So whatever other systems are there, karma jnana tapo yog. They talk about freeing, becoming free from karmas. But in fact, they can't become free from karmas. Because the true identity of the jiva is to be a servant of God. And if you don't have loving service, if you don't have praying, you're liberation, your freedom from karmas will always be tenuous. Shakala charya bhai sraddha devir gunagai jana kripa bhakti dite pari So I'm giving up everything else. We'll talk about that later. Shraddha devir gunagai I take shelter of Shraddha devi of the goddess of faith. That's interesting. I sing her glories. I sing the glories of Shraddha Devi. In the Yoga Sutra, Vyasa Bhasha, he says that Shraddha is like a mother who takes care of the yogi, holds him in her lap. In yoga, Shraddha is a bit, but the same idea. Shraddha doesn't mean false belief. Shraddha doesn't mean believing blindly. That's not what Shraddha means. Shraddha means, very fundamentally, optimism. Shraddha means, I have followed. Shraddha means to believe. Well, I spoke earlier about gratitude. You can't have faith without gratitude. Because faith arises out of recognizing the truth, right? I have faith that if I take a step forward, that I will put my foot on solid ground, right? Because of experience. It takes some wisdom 
to recognize the truth of internal experience, of spiritual experience, and to have faith in it. That takes wisdom. Because the things of the mind are ephemeral and we don't always, we're not always able to distinguish. Nowadays people place spiritual experience within the framework of the mind. This is what Yoga Shastra is very good at, about. What is transcendence of the mind and what is part of the mind itself? When Bhakti were saying that Radha and Krishna and Prem Bhakti, that these things all belong to a trans mental realm. Yatovacho nivartante aprapya manasosaha manasasaha. The mind can't get there. The words can't get there. That's the nature of the absolute. But once you've experienced that, when you come back into the into the world of the mind. And once you're again, you're in the world of duality and you make question marks about your own experiences. But if you have, if you frame your life in such a way around gratitude, then your faith will always be strong. So here he says that he's taking shelter of Shraddha Devi and glorifying Shraddha Devi, glorifying faith. Well, he doesn't say, you know that Rati, and here we had Kuru Rakim Apurvam Atitaram. Apurvam Atitaram. Have faith. Not faith, have love. Rati, have bhav. I'm trying to hold myself back from going into all the explanation of Rati and bhav. <laughs> we'll leave it for now. Probably have to come back to it. So, Jakripa Bhakti Ditte Pare. So Shraddha Devi, by the mercy of Shraddha Devi, you'll get this Rati. Shraddha, Rati, Bhakti, Anukramishyati. The Bhagavatam, one of the most beautiful verses in the Bhagavatam. Now, Satam Prasangat Mamavirya Sangvido Bhavanti Hrit Karna Rasayana Kata Tadjoshanar Ashwapavu Varga Vartmani Rati, I mean, Shraddha, Rati. Bhakti Ranukramishyati. In the association of devotees, you hear this sweet, medicinal, transformatory potions that are called Harikatha. The hearing and chanting of Krishna's name and glories and pastimes is the nectar. It's the medicine for Nivritta Tarshai Rupa Giyamana. Babo Shadat Srota Mano Viramat. Gautama Shloka Gunan. Mano Virajeta Vinapa Shubhnat. It's the medicine for material disease. Harikatha. So the sequence there given. Ado Sraddha, then Rati Bhava, and then Bhakti, which here means Prema in the Bhagavata verse. So if you associate with devotees and you hear Harikatha, then you'll get first, you'll get faith. Where does the faith come from? The faith comes from the joy. The faith comes from the bliss. You get a little taste and you want more. You believe. Some people, they stop believing in the bliss. Follow your bliss. That's what Joseph Campbell used to say. How can you have Hari Nama Sankirtan and feel the bliss and then the next day say this is all false, this is all bogus, God doesn't exist. You meet some devotee, your guru does something stupid and then all of a sudden it's all bogus, it's all false, it's all nothing. Follow your bliss. You didn't have bliss? Well, if you didn't have bliss, I'm sorry. You wouldn't be here listening to me, for instance, if you hadn't had some bliss. That bliss, we call that prema abhas, bhakti abhas, bhava abhas. It's like seeing the sun rising. Before the sun rises, just the dawning of the sun, you see the light. And you think, ah, the sun is coming. 
Prema Suryangshu Samya Bhag. So, let me just read the last verse of Bhakti Rotakur's translation here. Chari Dambha Anukhan Shara Ashta Tattaman Karothahe Nishkapata Rati Shre Rati Prarthanai Sridasa Goswami Pai E Bhakti Vinoda Kure Nati I bow down to Raghunath Das Goswami I pray for him to give me this Rati. Who else? Through the Parampara we get the grace of Rupa and Raghunath. They are our, our founder Acharyas. And whatever Acharyas, whatever spiritual masters we've had, their function has been to lead us to Rupa and Raghunath. If we don't get to Rupa and Raghunath, if we don't develop love for Rupa and Raghunath, if we don't develop bhava for Guru, Goshta, Sujani, Bhusuragani, Goshtalishu, Samantri, Srinamne, Rajanava, Yuva, Dvandasmarani. That's the sequence. All the way after Rajanava, Yuva, Dvandasmarani. That's where we're headed, folks. Prema Bhakti. So beg for the mercy of Raghunath Das Goswami. We beg for the mercy of our Guru Dev Sila Dita Prashad Thakur. We beg for the mercy of our Param Guru Dev Sila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. We may beg for the mercy of all the Vaishnavas who have even a flickering knowledge of Prema Bhakti. Please be merciful. Let us contemplate Raghunath Das's instructions to his mind and be imbued with his bhakti. Let us follow in the footsteps. Jai Sri Radha